In number 21, we have a stiff wire bent into a semicircle of radius 2 centimeters that's rotated at a constant angular speed of 40 revolutions per second in a uniform 20 millitesla magnetic field. What are the A frequency and B amplitude of the EMF induced in the loop? So first of all, um, if you think about it, as this wire rotates, it'll go from that position shown to the position shown below. And in doing so, it completely removes the magnetic flux through this shaded region. And then as it rotates back, it's going to return back to the original flux. So the EMF produced is going to be sinusoidal, something like this. Um, the frequency is the time required for it to go completely from here back to here again. In other words, when the wire starts out here up on top until it returns back to that point to start a complete new cycle, which would be over here. Each revolution is going to produce one complete cycle. We're told that if it's doing 40 revolutions per second, frequency is defined as the number of oscillations per second. And in this case, it's going to do one complete oscillation, um, or in this case, 40 complete revolutions every one second and that's going to produce one oscillation in the EMF curve. So what's the frequency? Well, it's just 40 hertz. That's the answer to A. Um, while we're on it real quick, though, I'm going to go ahead and calculate the period. Remember, period's the reciprocal of frequency. So in this case, 1 over 40, or 0 0.025 seconds. That's the amount of time it's going to take for it to go from here to here. Um, and you'll see why we want that in just a second. Um, <laughs> it take me too long to write this, but... And that's in seconds. To find the EMF produced, we're going to use uh, the law of electromagnetic induction, which states the EMF produced is equal to the negative change in magnetic flux over time. In particular, I'm just going to look at the point that it goes from here to here as the wire rotates around just once. So I'm really just looking at this section right here. Um, what's the change in flux? Well, it's going to be the area of that loop. Remember, that's the amount of magnetic flux that we're losing, um, which is going to be pi r squared. The 0.02 here comes from the 2 centimeters up here. Um, the 20 milliteslas is this green at number right here. And now here's the critical part. Um, I just want the change in flux when the wire goes from here to here. That's going to be half of this time that I just found up here. So instead of 0 0.025, 0 0.0125 seconds. That's just the time required to go from here to here, not all the way back again. I could do that, but then the change in flux would be double. Either way, um, I'm just going to do that. If you plug in those numbers, you'll discover that the EMF is going to be negative 2.01 times 10 to the minus 3 volts. Technically, the change in flux is negative, and so this should actually be a positive value. But again, we're only interested in the magnitude or just the amplitude of the EMF, so you could drop it anyway. That's about 2.01 millivolts. Not huge, but still something. Hopefully that makes sense. Good luck.